Once again, good afternoon and welcome. Today, the United States Army Military District of Washington, represented by the soldiers of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, and the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone, pay a special tribute to Lieutenant General Gwen Bingham, Assistant Chief of Staff for Installation Management, Washington, D.C., who was retiring after 38 years of distinguished service to the United States Army and our nation. Participating in today's review, from left to right is the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone. Formed in 1922 by then Army Chief of Staff, General John J. Pershing, the United States Army Band is the premier band of our senior service. Pershing Zone provides musical support for ceremonies and special events in our nation's capital and throughout the United States. The United States Army Band is under the direction of Colonel Andrew Esch and led by Drum Major Julian Aris. Elements of the Old Guard include Charlie Company, commanded by Captain Thomas Gregus, and led by First Sergeant Jonathan Lyons. Next on line is Delta Company, commanded by Lieutenant Trevor Rice, and led by Sergeant First Class Jared Dillon. Since the days of the American Revolution, the colors have been one of the most important elements of a military unit. At the center of our formation and bearing the national color is the nation's foremost color team, the 3rd Infantry's Continental Color Guard, led by Staff Sergeant Colt Stafford. Next on line is Honor Guard Company, commanded by Captain Kevin Doherty and led by Sergeant First Class Anthony Stokes. Following is the Commander-in-Chief's Guard, patterned after the unit created by General George Washington in 1776 to be his personal guard. The Commander-in-Chief's Guard is commanded by Captain Dick Tallman and led by First Sergeant Mike Lydiard. The last element online Dressed in the Continental Musician's uniform is the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps. These active duty musicians wore the reverse colors of their parent infantry unit. The men and women of the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps maintain this tradition by wearing red coats instead of the infantry blue. The corps is led today by Drum Major William Parks. Ladies and gentlemen, moving into position is the commander of troops for today's ceremony, Colonel James J. Tewitt, Commander, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. The history of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment reflects the growth and development of our nation. 52 well-earned campaign streamers, 2 valorous unit awards, 5 meritorious unit commendations, and 5 superior unit awards attest to the Old Guard's record of bravery in action and achievements during peacetime. In 1922, the War Department granted permission for the Old Guard to pass in review with bayonets fixed. The Old Guard will now fix bayonets to the traditional beat of the drum.
Ladies and gentlemen, taking the reviewing stand is the reviewing official for today's ceremony, Lieutenant General Gwen Bingham, accompanied by the host, General James C. McConville, Vice Chief of Staff of the Army. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as honors are rendered and remain standing for the invocation given by Chaplain Major General Soljum. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me as we mark this occasion in a word of prayer. Dear God Almighty, we thank you for the gift of leaders who develop their talents and shape the very lives in service to others. Lieutenant General Gwen Bingham is one such leader, and we ask a special blessing on her today. General Bingham's service to our country made a profound impact on our Army. She is a consummate professional, a person of character, and deeply committed woman of faith. She has blessed all whom she has led and served. Lord, please bless Gwen, her husband, PJ, and their children, Tava and Philip, as they begin this time of transition. Holy God, provide continued protection, guidance, and blessing to the Bingham family in the journey ahead. May the lamp of liberty and love continue to shine bright on this great nation, the United States Army, and on your servant, Gwen. In your most holy and blessed name I pray, amen.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors and remain standing for the United States National Anthem.
Please be seated. The Distinguished Service Medal is awarded to Lieutenant General Gwendolyn Bingham, United States Army, for exceptionally meritorious service to the government and duties of great responsibility over a 38-year career, culminating as the Assistant Chief of Staff for Installations Management, Headquarters, Department of the Army. Lieutenant General Bingham has commanded from company to brigade level. As a general officer, her senior leadership positions include Commandant, United States Army Quartermaster Center and School, Fort Lee, Virginia, from November 2010 to August 2012. Commanding General, White Sands Missile Range, White Sands, New Mexico, from September 2012 to June 2014. And Commanding General, United States Army Tank Automotive and Armaments Command, Life Cycle Management Command, Warren, Michigan, from June 2014 to May 2016. As the Assistant Chief of Staff for Installation Management, Lieutenant General Bingham provided steadfast leadership across a broad array of programs, including management of facilities and infrastructure, environmental programs, housing, installation logistics, public and private partnerships, energy and water security, and soldier and family morale, welfare, and recreation, all geared towards improving readiness and resiliency of the total army. Lieutenant General Bingham's selfless service and inspired leader are in keeping with the highest traditions of military service and reflect a distinct credit upon herself, the United States Army, and the nation. Signed, Mark T. Esper, Secretary of the Army, and Mark A. Milley, General, Chief of Staff, United States Army. Headquarters, Department of the Army, Special Orders. By order of the Secretary of the Army, the following General Officer is retired. Lieutenant General Gwen Bingham. General McConville is now presenting General Bingham with the United States flag in recognition of her time-honored service to the United States Army and the nation. At this time, Mrs. McConville is presenting Dr. Patrick J. Bingham with the Superior Public Service Medal for exceptional support to the soldiers, civilians, and families of the Office of the Assistant Chief of Staff for Installation Management from June 2016 to July 2019. During this period, Dr. Bingham was an inspiring, compassionate, and tireless volunteer whose exceptional efforts improved the morale, esprit de corps, and well-being of countless personnel a strong advocate for Army families and especially military children, he dedicated his time, talent, and energy to enhancing their resiliency, readiness, and quality of life. Dr. Bingham's lasting contributions as a spouse, mentor, and leader culminate more than 35 years of public service and are in great credit to him, the Office of the Assistant Chief of Staff for Installation Management, and the United States Army. Signed, Mark T. Esper, Secretary of the Army.
Dr. Bingham is also being presented the Department of the Army Certificate of Appreciation for his faithful and devoted service. It is his dedicated support which made possible such a lasting contribution to our nation by order of the Chief of Staff of the Army, Mark A. Milley, General, Chief of Staff, United States Army. On behalf of General Mark A. Milley, 39th Chief of Staff of the Army, General McConville is now presenting General Bingham with a portrait of General of the Army, George Marshall, in appreciation for his com her commitment and service to the nation. On behalf of General Bingham, an Old Guard soldier is presenting General Bingham's spouse and children with a gift bag in preparation for their upcoming family vacation to Hawaii. <laughs> Flowers are also being presented to General Bingham's mother-in-law. We are proud to recognize General Bingham's devotion to our country, and we wish her happiness and prosperity in her well-earned retirement. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the posting of the colors. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, General McConville. Well, good afternoon. It's a special day in the Army. It's a special day in the Army because we honor a great soldier, an outstanding leader, 
and a wonderful person, Lieutenant General Gwen Bingham. 30. Thirty-eight years of distinguished service to the nation. The first female garrison commander at Fort Lee. The first and only female quartermaster general and commandant of the quartermaster school. The first female commanding general of White Sands. The first female commanding general for the Tank Automotive and Armaments Life Cycle Management Command. Combat tours during Operation Iraqi Freedom in Operation Enduring Freedom. I could stop right here on Gwen's incredible career, but I would suggest there is much more to her as a person. When we leave the Army, we take with us our family, our friends, and our reputation. What remains is our legacy earned by the countless soldiers we mentored and coached. And I can tell you that Gwen has left a proud legacy because of the influence she has had on soldiers. In fact, my loggy speechwriter pulled out her Bingham's top 10 plus 4, and I have a copy of it right here. And she's been carrying around for years. That's the impact that Gwen has had on so many soldiers, non-commissioned officers, and officers. You've really done a remarkable job, job, Gwen, and had an incredible impact for our soldiers. So thank you again. It's a true tribute to Gwen to have so many people here today. I'd like to recognize some special guests. General Austin and Mrs. Mrs. Austin, the Honorable Alex Baylor, the Honorable Catherine Hamrick, General Vince Brooks, General Carter Ham, General Mickel Mick Nicholson and Ms. Noreen McDonald, General Vi and Mrs. Vi, General Johnny Wilson, General Ward, and I'm not sure if Mr. Earl Matthews made it, but if he's here, recognize him also. Gwen is joined by an amazing partner and supporter, her husband, PJ. PJ and Gwen married in November 1983, so that's 35 years going on 36. How great is that? <laughs> and, and here's the deal. They met as, as lieutenants at their first duty station. PJ and Gwen knew they had chemistry while playing cards together. PJ sealed the deal with a proposal after only, listen to this, 10 days of courting. And Gwen accepted. And, and I can tell you they were not using the Army staff decision-making process. <laughs> no, we would have had taken about 10 months on that and not sure we would have gotten it right like they did. PJ spent 10 years in active duty as an air defender. He deployed with the 10th ADA Brigade to Israel as part of Task Force Patriot Defender during Desert Storm. He later became a career educator for 27 years. This is a powerful team that both mentored and coached many people in their communities, and they're truly an example of the Army and citizen leaders. Gwen and PJ have set a great example for their children. and As a result, they are both extremely successful. Their daughter, Tava, is a graduate a doctor and a graduate of the University of Texas with a master's degree from the University of Central Florida and a doctor degree from the University of Alabama. Roll Tide. <laughs> she, <laughs> and she cur currently works as the director of operations at the New York University in New York City. Their son, Philip, is a graduate of Virginia Tech and currently works as a sales engineer, engineer for Aerogear. There's a lot of talk about the military being a family business. And Gwen's family truly personifies this thought. Both Gwen's dad and his, and his twin brother served 20 years in the U.S. Army. And I know they're both watching from above, and they are very, very proud of how you turned out. And I got a long list, because this is an incredible family. Gwen's father-in-law, Robert, served 20 years, Vietnam veteran. Gwen's oldest brother, Danny, served 20 years. Gwen's, Gwen's younger brother, Mickey, he, he was in the reserve, and he served 12 years. Gwen's brother-in-law, Terry, served 25 years in the United States Air Force. We'll give him credit for service, but you know, anyway. No, <laughs> no just kidding, we really appreciate what you do. And Gwen's brother-in-law, Keith, he served in the Army for six years. 
And it's great to have so many family present. Gwen's mother-in-law is here from all the way from South Carolina, and I know it was a great drive, and I know Gwen really appreciates that. Her sisters are all here. Her sister-in-law is here, and a whole bunch of cousins. I can't list them. I only get you know, 10 minutes, so thank you for all being here. I know you make this very, very special. And there's a lot of friends here. And I'd like to highlight one special one for first battle buddy from when they were lieutenants, Judy Manza. And she's here with her husband, Pat. They were at Gwen's and PJ's wedding 35 years ago, and they have attended every one of her GO promotions. What an incredible group of family and friends. Thank you for all gathering today to celebrate a tremendous Army leader. You've all played a critical role in her life, developing, supporting, and caring for her as she progressed. Now, some of you may know that Gwen graduated from the University of Alabama in 1981. The coach then was Bear Bryant. They had a 9-2 in one season. They were sixth in the nation. I guess for them, that was an okay season. Since then, she's done all the toughest logistics jobs in the Army. She served all over the world to include Germany, Korea, Afghanistan, and Kuwait. She's one of four logistics branch general officers from a cohort. And one of the two is still active today. So just to put this in perspective, when she graduated from college, there were 5,676 other officers with her, our lieutenants. Only 41 have been confirmed for general officer. That's less than 1%. One, 1%. Put it this way, there's probably more chance for Army to play Alabama in the next national championship for a lieutenant to become a lieutenant general of the United States Army. I'm not worried about Army being in there. I'm a little worried about Alabama making it to the next championship, just, just, just for a point of order. Gwen, you've been a trailblazer, a great example of professionalism, excellence, and leadership. You never stop teaching, you never stop coaching, and you never stop mentoring anyone within your reach. Thank you and PJ for making a difference with everyone you meet and inspiring so many young, and young men and women to reach for the stars. You've had an incredibly successful career in the Army. I know you will continue to serve as a soldier for life. Best wishes on your next rendezvous, rendezvous with destiny. We remain Army strong. Ladies and gentlemen, General Bingham. Bring these down to the little people's level. <laughs> well, good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> To General McConville, all the distinguished guests whom have been recognized, thank you all so, so much for being here this afternoon. To all of my comrades, family, and friends, what a great day to be a soldier. Hua! <laughs> First, I'd like to give honor to God for waking me up this morning and bringing me to this place to be with you. It is an absolute privilege to look out among the crowd and to see the many distinguished guests, family, friends, and comrades of the best army in the whole wide world. Yes, give yourselves a hand and all of our military men and women around the world. Thank you all for coming. My family and I are truly humbled and grateful for your presence. General McConville, thank you, sir, and Maria for hosting this ceremony and for always making me feel like a valued member of the team. 
Congratulations to you and Maria on your confirmation to be our Army's next Chief of Staff. Yes, let's give him a round of applause. Hoa. It's great news. And speaking of Chief of Staff, without a doubt, we have been blessed by the leadership of General Mark Milley, recently nominated to be the next chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and that of Secretary Mark Esper, now serving as the Acting Secretary of Defense. I thank them both in absentia for the privilege to have had a seat at their table these past three years, where decisions are made daily in support of the readiness and care of our soldiers, civilians, and families. Members of the old guard, as always, you look and sound great. I want, yes, let's give them a round of applause. I want to thank each of these men and women standing before us today for preserving the very best traditions of our Army and for being the outstanding, committed, and professional soldiers and leaders that they are. We are definitely blessed to have them. While you honor me today, and my family and I are profoundly grateful and humbled for your presence, in my view, this ceremony is more than just about me. It is a tribute to the many, many people who have coached, taught, trained, encouraged, mentored, and inspired me through my amazing Army journey. A journey that was to last a mere four years and not a day longer. Oops. But as many of you have heard me say, something happened along the way. Not only did I fall in love with a lieutenant from South Carolina named PJ, as the vice told you, I fell in love with this vocation called the U.S. Army, and I have been the better for it. To that end, I want to honor and thank each of you who have come today and those who couldn't come and those whose lives have touched mine in a profound way. Thank you for molding and shaping a younger version of myself, a native of Troy, Alabama, population 23,000, into this daughter, sister, wife, mother, army leader, and soldier for life. Indeed, I stand proud today as the daughter of an enlisted man, an army medic and first sergeant and his bride, my mom. My parents were married for 54 years before death parted them. I miss my dad, the old Sarge, as he was affectionately called, and my mom. But today I'm hopeful that they are looking down smiling knowing that this three-star general is the manifestation of their love and devotion, and I am forever grateful for the foundation, life lessons, and values they instilled in me nearly 60 years ago. I cherish the love, support, and positive home environment my parents provided to my siblings and me while growing up. Without doubt, I'll feel their presence every single day. I want my brothers, Danny and Mickey, my sisters, Falon and Faith, to know how much I love and adore you all. Your love and support has sustained me in a mighty way. I cannot begin to tell you just how much you mean to me. I love you all. To my extended family, aunts, uncles, cousins, my in-laws and other relatives who are here today, thank you for your unceasing love, support, and positive spirit that sustained me and always made me feel like I could accomplish anything. We have truly covered good ground together. And to the round-headed man from South Carolina, the one who came into my life driving an Audi 4000, brand new, smelling and looking good, ladies, a Kappa man named PJ. I love you, I love you, I love you. 
when <laughs> When you asked me to be your wife and the mother of your children, my heart skipped a beat knowing that you were absolutely the right man for me. I remain so grateful to God for the blessing of our union for nearly 36 years. Thank you for sharing this amazing journey with me. It simply wouldn't be possible without you. Thanking you for completing me in every way. I say I love you. For the two rug rats in our lives, now two grown-up young adults, Dr. Taba Michelle and Philip Jamal, thank you for being the love of our lives and adding so much pleasure and adventure to our world. I've often told you both that, and you'll remember this, you're not the boss of me. Well, the truth is, you have an awful lot of influence, and that is a good thing. We're so very proud of both of you and are continually excited for each of your journeys that lie ahead. Keep the love of God first in your lives and always know that your mom and dad will have everlasting love and support for you both as you endeavor to do that which is lying ahead of you. To the women of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, who are? <laughs> Many of them are here wearing my favorite color and the colors of our sorority, red. You probably have seen them. Thank you for your unwavering love, your sisterhood, and friendship since 1978, when in college I was inducted to our beloved sorority. You taught me how to care for others in need through public service initiatives while forging strong bonds of sisterhood. I am truly grateful for each of you who have come to share this occasion and those who continually encourage our nation's citizens in words, deeds, and actions. Without doubt, you're an integral part of my life and I thank you for sharing this journey with me. I must also thank the men of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity, PJ's beloved fraternity, and fellow Greeks who have supported PJ and I throughout our life together. It means so much to have you all here. Thank you all. In the words of the 26th Army Chief of Staff, General Creighton Abrams, these 38 years as a soldier have truly been an affair of the heart. Someone once asked me, when did you know that you would stay in the Army beyond the four years I had declared? Well, I became, it became very obvious to me that I was hooked on the military at year six. We were stationed at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. I told PJ then that this work is kind of exciting and I'm not quite ready to get out just yet so I think I'll just stay a while longer. Well, that original four-year battle cry became 10 years, 20, 38 years. My, where does the time go? It's hard to call it work when you love it so much and when you're fulfilled in so many ways, accomplishing multi-missions around the globe all while serving with a team of teams who make a positive difference in the lives of thousands, and I dare say tens of thousands of people around the world. That sense of purpose and fulfillment truly emanates from the amazing people I've had the privilege to team with. Subordinates, peers, and seniors alike who give their all to every mission and assignment given them, seeking little in return but for the opportunity to serve their country at home and places abroad. Without doubt, I have truly been blessed. From my Army home at Fort Lee, Virginia, where my Army journey began, to Fort Lewis, Washington, where I met and married the love of my life. From Fort Bragg, North Carolina, where Op Temporal runs high and Taba was born, to Germany, where we added a cuckoo clock and son Philip to the fold. Throughout every assignment, family and friends, you are represented in this hall today. 
Fort Lee, Lewis, Bragg, Hood, White Sands Missile Range, Warren in Detroit, Michigan, Washington, D.C., overseas locations in Mannheim and Heidelberg, Germany, Korea, Honduras, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, Kuwait, and Afghanistan. From these locations and points in between, I'll take a little of each of you with me to Austin, Texas. God willing, when we get to Texas, I'll be trading in my combat boots for flip-flops, flats, and cowboy boots. But what I will never trade for anything in the world is the privilege to have met and served with each of you. General Johnny Wilson, my Army dad, who met me as a brand new second lieutenant, and Keith Maxey, my first battalion commander, who filled in as father of the bride in 1983. I'll never trade anything for the privilege to have stood on the shoulders of giants, senior leaders and mentors who modeled what right looks like and paved the way for me, many of whom are in attendance today. When I relinquish my CAT card on the 31st of August for a retiree card, I will forever cherish the privilege to have worked alongside the best teammates on the planet, men and women across the Army staff and formations throughout our Army, leaders extraordinaire who taught me so much. And to my own team, Team Axim, in a word, maybe two, you rock and are an incredible team of professionals who pour your heart and soul into everything you do. I cannot begin to tell you how much I appreciate each of you for the work you do to enable the readiness of our soldiers, civilians, and families. Thank you for three great culminating years with me. I will never forget any of you, and I look forward to seeing you along life's trails. American poet, singer, and storyteller Maya Angelou once said, and I quote, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel, end quote. And to that end, I want to thank you all for enriching my life beyond measure and making me feel like family. Your kind spoken words, cards, letters, prayers, emails, text messages, and phone calls were a priceless source of encouragement and inspiration when I received them, and just what I needed along this journey. I hate goodbyes, so I won't say it now. Just so long until we meet again. Once a soldier, always a soldier, soldier for life. May God bless each of you and your families. May God bless our men and women who are serving in harm's way in places all around the globe. May we vow never to forget our fallen comrades, our wounded warriors, and those not yet accounted for. And may God continue to bless these, the United States of America. This is the Army's Assistant Chief of Staff for Installation Management Number 14, signing off the net.
ladies and gentlemen, the Army Song. The words can be found on the back of your program. The United States Army is honored to have presented today's special ceremony. Guests are welcome to express best wishes to General Bingham and her family in a receiving line and reception at Spates Hall Conference Community Center immediately following the ceremony. <laughs>